Hello and welcome to another class. <coughs> so, at the last lecture, we took at the performer income statement as well as the cash budget along with a receipt and payment schedule. So, today we are going to continue by looking at the performer balance sheet. And we say it shows the anticipated accumulated changes in the firm's asset holdings and liability and equity account over the next period. Alright. And we also said that it is constructed from prior year balance sheet, performer income statement, as well as the cash budget. So if we start with the previous balance sheet, here is what that uh, looks like, showing um, at December 31st, 2020, what these uh, balances are. And then we will develop our performer balance sheet by using that prior balance sheet and some items will remain unchanged, like marketable securities, long-term debt, common stocks. There was nothing to indicate that those have changed, so the assumption is that they remain unchanged. Then we have our performer income statement that we have already done. And in developing our performer income statement, we were able to determine what the ending inventories, as well as we were able to determine what would be the increase in retained earnings. And then, thirdly, from our cash budget, we were here we can we were able to determine what the, uh, the cash balances, accounts receivable, plant and equipment, accounts payable, as well as note payable. So here is our performer um, balance sheet that we will create based on a uh, previous balance sheet, the performer income statement, and the performer cash budget. So the cash here, first item on the balance sheet, the information we have from table 1.4. Table 4 15 as the cash budget, and if we go to table 4 15, it's a ending cash balance right here. And so it finds its way into our balance sheet as 5,000. Marketable securities remain unchanged. Accounts receivable uh, was what? Accounts receivable is found from table 4-10. And in table 4-10, we can see we can see that June sales would be 20,000. And we are also aware that 80% of the previous month's sale will be collected in the current month. So therefore, at the end of June, 80% of June sale will be outstanding. And that 80% of June sale will be 16,000. So next we have inventory. And that information comes from table 4-7, where we have already found the ending inventory. So you can go to table 4-7, and you will see how uh, the ending inventory was calculated. And so the next item we have is plant and equipment. And the, the original balance sheet, the plant and equipment was 24. 7,740 and then we increased that by 18,000 and this information this 18,000 you can find in your uh, 
cash payment schedule, which is table 4-13. So if you go to table 4-13, you can see that here, new equipment purchases, we purchased for 8,000 in February and 10,000 in June. And that's total 18,000. So that takes care of the assets. Uh, so now let's look at the liabilities and the shareholders' equity. So accounts payable is now 5732, and that information comes from our cash payment schedule. So as you can see here with our cash payment schedule, it says that the information again would be table 4-13 so let's go to table 4-13 and look for our cash payment schedule for our uh, purchases so you can see that the purchases here so um monte material purchase right here 5732 and the payment schedule said it's for the prior month purchase so for example may purchase will be paid for in june so therefore june purchase will be paid for in july so that the outstanding accounts payable would be 5732 then we have a uh, notes payable so notes payable would be a new item here that we're introducing in our balance sheet because if you notice it wasn't here in our original balance sheet and it represents our loan so table 4-15 it shows you that there was a cumulative loan balance of 5884 this accumulated loan balance that we have here would represent the outstanding loan and so it is shown here in our income statement as note payable remember note payable is usually a short-term loan and we know that in our cash budget situation it was always a short-term loan so it is put here as a note as notes payable so there was no change in long-term debt there's no change in in common stock so we move to retained earnings and we can see that retained earnings would increase by 8,524. So we started in our original balance sheet as 20,500. And then there's an increase of 8,524. So where did this 8,524 come from? This 8,524 would be from our income statement so if you go to our income statement you will see that increase in retained earnings would be 8524 so this would be like the uh, the income after uh, the net income after common dividends was taken out the difference would be added to retained earnings So, based on that, we can sum our entire balance sheet. And you can take your time and go back over so you can understand how all the different elements were put together here. So, next we will look at our percentage of sales uh, method. And this is a shortcut, less exact, but easier method of determining uh, financing needs. I assume that the balance sheet account will maintain a constant percentage relationship with sales. So more sales would also mean more assets which require more financing. And we can summarize by using the required new fund formula. So the required new fund formula would help us to determine what those new financing that would be required so here is 
a percentage of sales table. It shows a, a Howard Corporation balance sheet and its percentage of sales. Um, so if we start with our asset, we will see that cash is 2% of sales, account receivables 20%, inventory 12%, and uh, equipment would be 25%. And that amount to a total of 60% of sales would be asset. Um, we're only interested in that. So the only liabilities that have that will have the spontaneous increase with sales would be accounts payable, that was a 20% uh, as 20% of sale, and accrued expenses that 20 that five percent of sale. So uh, liability would be 25% of sales. So we can see that if the spontaneous asset increased by 100,000, then, sorry, the spontaneous, if sales increased by 100,000, then the spontaneous asset increase would be 100,000 times 60%. And then if spontaneous liability is increased, uh, would increase by 25% of 100,000. And for retained earnings, retained earnings, the, the total uh, sale would be 300,000. And we know that the profit margin would be 6%, and the payout ratio would be 50%. So therefore, uh, retained earnings would be nine, would be nine thousand. So how can we finance the new assets of sixty thousand? It we can finance it by increasing those spontaneous liabilities uh, by twenty five percent, retained earning by nine thousand. But there's still a difference of twenty six thousand that needs to be financed, and this would would be the required new funds. So from our formula here, we can see how we could uh, quickly calculate that 26,500. We have, we could use this formula that says asset over uh, sales number one. So in our case here, it would be uh, assets uh, over 200,000 times the change in assets, which would be 100,000. So the assets over, over uh, sales of 200,000 represent our 60%. Then we're going to minus um, liabilities over that um, uh, as sales number one, which again would be our 25%, and our change in sales 100,000 uh, minus the profit margin of 6%, times sales, uh, total sales of 300 to, and if the payout ratio is 0.5, so then retained earnings would be, um, we can find from uh, the profit margin times total sales times the payout ratio. And that would give us our, our $26,000 as required new funds. So let's look at the sustainable uh, growth rate. So it's the maximum amount of growth achieved without increasing the debt ratio. So if you want to maintain the debt ratio of, say, uh, um, in our case, I think it's 1.18 times, then um, this formula will determine the maximum amount that can be borrowed without increasing that debt rate. So here is our balance uh, sheet required new funds with uh, sales expansion using the percentage of sales. So we see that sales would be 200,000 and it increased by 50% 
100,000. So we know that the sales we are working with is now 300,000, a 50% increase. So if we start with cash, cash is going to increase by 50%. Accounts receivable, 50%. Inventory, 50%. Plant and equipment, 50%. So we can see that there's a 50% increase in inventory and in, in, in total assets that's going to take it to 60,000. How about accounts receivable? So accounts receivable will also increase by 50%. Accounts accrued expenses by 50%. And we did say that uh, um, there will be no change in notes payable. Uh, or at least the change in notes payable will not come from from the spontaneous increase in, in, uh, in assets and liability, but from the new uh, required funds. So we can see um, that there would be 25,000 increase in liabilities with caused by the 100,000 increase in sales. And we also know that retained earnings would increase by 9,000. All of that was what we have originally uh, uh, initially determined. So what's our new balance sheet would look like? So cash would now be 7,500, 7, accounts receivable 60,000, inventory would now be 37,500, plant and equipment 75,000, and our total assets would be 180,000. How about uh, liabilities? So accrued accounts payable would be 60,000, accrued expenses would be 15,000, and we, because we have to go out and acquire new funds, that new funds will now increase our notes payable to forty one thousand. Note that the note payable could actually it could actually be a short term uh, liability, which in case would call that in that case would call it notes payable, or it could have been long term loan, which of course in that case would uh, show it as a long term loan um, in our balance sheet. So, as you can see here, we know that a common stock didn't change. Retained earnings is now going to be 54,000. And that would bring our total liabilities and shareholders' equity to 180,000. So, let's look. That's some of the ratios that we calculated here. So debt to asset ratio was before the expansion 0.54% and after the expansion it's at 0.64. So not percent but 0.54 and 0.64. Debt to equity would be was initially at 1.18 times and it's now at 1.81. How about if we uh, increase the if if we increase based on the sustainable growth rate? So remember, we we could determine based on our formula what would be the sustainable uh, growth rate. So in determining that sustainable growth rate, we determine that. We could only increase. We could only increase sales by twelve point two four percent if we are to maintain the same uh, debt to equity rate. So, if sales increase by only twelve point two four percent, then there would be with the company would be able. To maintain its same its debt to equity ratio. So 
24,500 would be 24,480 would what would be that sales would be able to increase by. So we can see here how cash would increase by uh, 0.124 percent. Uh, so those accounts receivable inventory um, equipment and assets would it therefore increase by 14.688 and so a total assets would now be 134.688 accounts receivable would increase by 4896 accrued expenses by 124 and our notes table but the required new funds we could only require we could only achieve 1834 of required new funds uh, so as to maintain our debt to equity ratio so that would bring our notes table to 16,834. And retained earnings would increase by 6734. So our total retained earnings would now go to 51734. And you can see that our total uh, shareholders equity will now be at uh, 134,688. So, at that case, the debt to asset ratio and the debt to equity ratio will be maintained at 0 0.54 and 1.18 uh, times. So, we are able, if the company wants to maintain its debt to equity ratio, then it would have to increase by a less amount. It would have to increase sales by a less amount than a um, hundred thousand. And only by twenty-four thousand four eighty will it be able to maintain the same debt-asset ratio or debt-equity um, ratio. All right. So. In summary, financial forecasting is used to anticipate events in advance, particularly a need to raise more money for the business. A complete forecast would include a performer income statement, cash budget, and a performer balance sheet. The basis for most forecasts is a sales projection. Simplified forecasts can be prepared using the percent of sales method and the SGR and the RNA formulas provide insight on the impact of sales growth and funding requirements. Okay, so this was a pretty short uh, lecture. So I'll see you in the next tutorial when we will do some questions so we can further um, we can further develop the understanding of this area. So bye for now and see you in the next tutorial.